I like to give my armies a little bit of extra character, a bit more than just painting them and then go and play with them. But that's easy for me to say because I usually play quite elite armies. I have a custodies army and I have ultramarines. And yeah, it's easy to even name each individual model for those armies. But how about horde armies? So I was thinking about this and I just picked orcs as the first army that I'm going to work on to get a bit more character in them. And I might do a couple others, but orcs because, hey, it's October, October, let's do this. Now, first of all, I always start with the lore of the army. I always think about how this would be, how would this work in real life or if you were part of the orc army. And the thing is, orcs are extremely, extremely hierarchical. They all know who is stronger than them, who is bigger than them, who is better, tougher, harder than them. And this doesn't really show if you just make 10 orc boys with a knob. Because the knob is bigger, tougher, stronger, but those other nine guys, there's differences in strength and difference in which position they hold in their hierarchy as well. And so I went to work with that. And to be clear, I don't use my bit box. I have a massive bits box because I make lots of different videos for this channel and I just buy the start collecting boxes of the armies and then paint one or two models and the rest is there for me to scrap and work with. But I don't want to do that. I want to imagine I'm an orc player who just collects orcs. So I stick with the bits that are in the orc box and I use paints as well to set different models apart. So how did I do this? Well, first of all, you have your knob. Makes sense. He's the leader of the group and you also need one just for the game. He has an actual influence on the game. But if there's a knob, he probably has a couple of buddies of him that are the bruisers, you know, the guys that keep the rest of the boys in check, the guys that he relies on to keep himself in power, but who are probably also at some point going to challenge him if they survive long enough for this. So I got two guys that are much more heavily armored than the rest. They get helmets, they get two shoulder pads, and of course the guy with the special weapon is uh, one of the bruisers as well, because uh, a runt of an orc will never be able to keep that gun in his hands. If he finds that gun, the bigger orc is going to punch him, kick his teeth in and steal his weapon. That's how orc society works. They don't sit around campfires talking, you know, telling stories about how cool they were. No, they show it. They steal from each other, they beat each other up and the runts are just left with the scraps. So I got a knob, I got two bruisers, then I got a couple of guys that are making their way up. They got one shoulder pad, they have a helmet, they have some more interesting weapons like the, the grenades and so on. And then I got four runs. Guys or boys with no helmets, no shoulder pads, and just a chopper and a bolter or a slugger. What do they call it with orcs? Anyways, these are the guys that have no additional equipment. They have nothing at all, just some rusty old weapons. Now, this is my setup. And the cool thing with the Orc Boys box, you can make 11 models, even though you have 10 in a unit. So I have my uh, knob, I have two bruises, I have four uh, Orc runs and four Orc Boys. Let's call them boys. Now, having them assembled, and these are all just bits you can find in the box itself, it's time to paint them. And I'm also going to use paint to set them apart. So the weaker orcs are going to have lighter skin than the tougher orcs. And this is a little you know, throwback to Warhammer Fantasy where you had black orcs. The, the tougher orcs have darker skin, the weaker orcs have lighter skin. And I think this is a cool way to set them apart. Uh, but I am still going to use pretty much the same paints. I don't want to have five different greens in my you know, sort of paint kit when I paint orcs. It's just gonna be one green skin, and then I'm going to use shades to differentiate the different levels of orcs. And they're gonna have very rusty weapons. Now all orcs are going to have rusty weapons, except maybe the highest boss, you know. This is another thing that I was thinking about. If an orc grows, in power, he's going to steal more and more weapons, he's going to assemble his own kit, and that kit is going to keep changing and keep getting upgraded. And an orc who stops upgrading his weapons and armor is an orc who is on the way out, clearly, because somebody else is going to upgrade his weapons and armor and is going to overtake him. So with all this in mind, 
let's show you how I paint it. I'm gonna paint two models for this video. I'm not gonna show you paint all 11. I'm gonna paint a runt and I'm going to paint the knob so that you can really see the two different models next to each other and how similar uh, the paints are, the, the, not the paints that I use, but how different techniques can change how the model looks. And that way you can you know, show the hierarchy in the org model. So let's get started. I'm going to start with the skin because this is the lower lying part of the model. You know, the clothes, etc., are a bit higher. That means they are easier to get to after, you know, doing the other stuff. And so I can work quickly and dirty. And uh, it doesn't matter if I hit the other parts, the armor, the cloth and so on, because I'll paint over that later on. And I'm starting with Elysian green. And this is a bit of a snot green. And it's, I think, a good base for some light orc skin. And then I wash the Runs skin with Thonian camo shade, kind of washed out green shade. And this is the first step that's going to be different for the knob because the knob I'm going to wash with non-oil. And so that's immediately a way to set the tougher guys apart from the runs. The tougher guys have darker skin. Uh, of course, I'm going to dry brush this a bit later to give it a little bit of a highlight. And that's also another way to differentiate between different ones. Higher or heavier highlights on the runs to make them even lighter and lesser highlights on the tougher guys, the knob and the bruisers. And with the washes dry, you can really see the difference in the skin tones. The runt over here is much lighter green than the knob. And that's just the difference in shading. Now that's all. And now I'm going to highlight them. And I'm still keeping the knob quite green because I want to be able to scale this up so that if there's a boss on the table, he's even darker green, but still green and not just a black orc. But let's highlight. And I highlight with a pretty light dry brush of Nurgling Green. And on the runs, I'm doing this heavier than on the bosses or the bruisers or the boys, because again, the Nurgling Green will really lighten the knob, the model. And uh, it's another way to set the skin tones apart, you know, so now you've got only two colors of green and two washes, non-oil, Athonian camo shade. And with that, you can pretty much paint all your orc flesh and still have different skin tones for the different levels of the knobs and boys and runs and even your Gretchen. All right, the skin is done. I'm going to work on the cloth. And for the runt and for the boss, I'm just using the same colors everywhere. I'm going to start with giving the shirt a layer of Skaven Blight Dinge, but I'm also now going to do some different things for the runs and for the boss because the runs are going to have very rusted out weapons and I find that if you give them a base layer of grey that the rust looks more realistic instead of using a base layer of metal because you know rusted metal usually corrodes and it's kind of dulls before it really starts to rust. So on the runs I'm painting the weapons and all the other metal parts like the armor and so with Skaven Blight Dinge as well. And then I do the pants, the gloves, any leather straps and so on with Rhinox hide. And I'm doing the same on the knob as well. Okay, so the runt and the knob are now pretty much at the same stage. They've done their skin, the cloth and pretty much ready to paint the weapons. Of course, the knob has way more bits and pieces on him that require a bit more attention. And that's why I'm going to start with the runt first. I'm gonna do him first because the weapons are just the last bit to do for this model. And then I'm going to finish the knob and I'll show you all the details, the bits and pieces, and of course the extra paint jobs that I'm going to do on him. So let's start with him. And for the weapons, I'm going to start with Typhus Corrosion. And I'm going to start with just dabbing this on all over the metal parts. And really everything can get a bit of this type's corrosion. It's fine if you miss little parts because it's you know, all painted gray and so it still looks a little bit me metallic. And then I dry brush all of that with some Mornfang Brown. And this is just a very quick way to get a rust effect going. And while I have the Mornfang Brown open, I'm also going to dry brush his pants and the other leather parts on it, like the glove that he has, just to give that a little bit of a highlight as well. And then I dry brush over that with some Ryza Rust. Just don't overdo it with this color because it's really bright. 
Then the final touch for these weapons is a bit of dry brush with Stormhost Silver. And I really focus now on the parts that would actually get knocked and used, such as the sharp edge of the axe, but also the barrel of the gun and just whatever sticks out and might be used to bludgeon somebody to death with. So that's the weapons of the runt done. And there's still a few things to do, such as his teeth, his eyes and the earrings, little decorations these guys still have. But I'm going to work on the knob now and I'm going to do these things on the knob anyway. So, you know, you figure out how I did it on the, the little ones as well. So for the knob, let's start with the weapons. And we're going to give the weapons, the armor, pretty much everything that's made out of metal, a layer of lead belcher to start with. And then all that metal gets a wash with Agrax Earthshade. And that's just to give it all a little bit of a rusty look. And after that wash, I'm going to get some rust on all the metals anyway, but you know, much, much lighter than on the runs. And I'm just taking Typhus Corrosion here and I'm stippling it in and then we'll move on to dry brushing with afterwards. And then I dry brush a bit with Mornfang Brown. And it's okay if you hit parts of the gun where you didn't put the Typhus Corrosion, but make sure you at least hit the parts where there is Typhus Corrosion, because that way you build up the rust and you still get a little bit of this you know, Mornfang Brown rust looking color on other parts of the metal that aren't as rotten through as the Typhus Corrosion. And that's the rusty weapons for the knob done. No riser rust for these guys because it's just a little too bright and it will make it look even more worn than it is. So now I'm working on the cloth parts on the model and any of the bruisers and so on, but also the runs that have cloth strapped around their arms and it's all painted corn red. And then any bone teeth and nails and so on get a layer of screaming skull. I'm just quickly going through a couple of small steps now, painting in little details that really only are on the knob and the bruisers and maybe some of the boys, but not on the runs. Like little gems, little rings, little bullets that they've hanging off their gear and all those things. So then we'll do a couple of washes and then finally we'll get to paint a couple of patterns on the armor, make it really orky. And I couldn't paint a straight line if my life depended on it, but I'm just going to try and make it work. After all, it's an orc painting this stuff. It's not a human who's painting this, right? So some Rune Lord bras for the bullets that are hanging off their gear everywhere. And especially the shells, you know, all of this. And let's just paint the strap Rune Lord bras as well to speed things up. Time for a bit of shading. Uh, there's not much to do, but I want to make the gray parts of him look a bit more black. And that's why I'm washing it with Drakenhof Nightshade, dark blue shade. And this dark blue over the gray will turn it blackish, but it will still keep some uh, depth and more interesting features in it. If instead you would do it with non-oil, it really becomes black and you don't really see the highlights anymore. And I'm giving the red cloth a wash of Agrax Earthshade. Enough to give it a bit of shading, but instead of non-oil again, it gets less desaturated. And this way you still have some clear red on your models. And then a bit of Seraphim Sepia over the bony parts and making sure that the tips of these horns stay, you know, screaming skull but that's more yellowish closer to the helmet. And I'm going to do a little bit on the teeth as well. And I'm going for a similar effect, really yellow those teeth. No nice dental work in an orc army. For his eye, I'm using a little drop of Evil Sun Scarlet. And the lens on his scope gets some Spirit Stone Red, a glossy red technical paint that will make it look kind of like glass. Time to paint some glyphs on the armor and the guns. And I've said it before, this doesn't have to be neat. You don't have to draw perfect lines and perfect squares and all those things. It's a, an orc painting an orc armor. They don't work with perfect lines. Anyway, find a little square piece on the model. For example, here, this part of the gun. And I'm going to paint this all in gray sear. And starting with gray sear because white just doesn't cover. And it's easier to paint black over white, of course, than white over black. 
And then with black, I'm starting to draw on some squares. And it's a good idea to start small and expand them afterwards, because again, it's easier to paint with black over white than it is to paint with white over black. And just try to get a bit of a checkerboard pattern here going. As you can see, it's not really straight, but that's fine. We can just keep going back with gray sear, touch it up, make some straight lines. Keep going back and forth with your black and your gray sear until you have a result that looks good enough, you know, for an org. There, checker pattern is good enough for me. Now on his claw, I'm going to paint some org teeth, uh, kind of similar to this icon that he has on his back. I want to try something like that, but with red over here. And so I'm just going to freehand this, see how it turns out, some big, tooth over here, something smaller, another small one, and then a big tooth over there. Fill this in over there, and that's a good enough orc glyph again for me. And then a little triangle pattern on this shoulder pad here, and it's pretty easy to do because there are these studs, and those are just going to be the corners of the triangles. And Paint it in like that. And we'll do a couple more here. There. And then some blood for the blood god on his claw to really give him that look like he's been at work. And there you have a runt, an orc with no shoulder pads, no helmets and rusted out weapons, followed by an actual orc boy, shoulder pad, helmet, little pattern painted on, not too badly rusted equipment. And here's the bruiser, a cooler weapon, more armor, tougher, harder than all the other orcs in the unit, but not nearly as hard and tough as the knob. The biggest, baddest orc of the unit, with weapons and armor that are not so rusted through as the others. This guy clearly keeps up with new developments and new looting opportunities in the field. And I really think this is a good way to give your units more character. And if you build up a bigger unit, let's say 20 or even 30 orcs, you stick of course with the one knob because you only allowed one knob in a unit for the game. Add one or two bruisers, make maybe five, six uh, orc boys, and then the rest runs. You get a really flavorful army. And yeah, it's a little cheeky, but those runs really require a lot less painting than the more armored and, and more advanced orcs. So you're also saving yourself quite a bit of time in the painting department. If, you know, gaming is more your thing than painting, then that's a really good part of this. Yeah, yeah. Giving more character to your orcs as well. Now, as always, I would like to give a big shout out to my patrons. Thank you guys for your support. If you want to support me financially, you can find links to my Patreon in the description below. But there's also links to my Facebook and Instagram where you can just see more pics of these orgs and of course the other models that I'm painting. Thanks for watching. See you next time.